um, we will the, in this session on uh, PhD and Masters uh, preparation before Viva. I would like to talk about uh, a number of things, but uh, the first part of this uh, discussion, this deliberation, this presentation is on the 12 principles of of uh, Viva preparation, so to say. Yeah? Uh, so I'll talk about that first. Uh, we need to share the the slide so that I can see or the, the, the word file. I prepared a word file. <clears throat> okay, there you go. Um, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. All right. This is five uh, viva preparation, twelve principles, yeah. <laughs> by my by me. Uh I I've <coughs> listed down 12 principles. This is based on my experience and my uh, experience as a supervisor, experience as an examiner, experience as a, as a, what, as a, a representative of the director and the dean when I was still with social sciences, right? Uh, so I, I've gathered these principles uh, that would guide, yeah, guide, um, uh, if you guide you during the viva, the oral defense, the viva bosse, right? So uh, I, I think if you grab these 12 principles, it is very important. Remember, viva is a, is an event that can make or break uh, your PhD or your master, right? So I've seen uh, students, postgraduate students uh, attending viva session with a low grade, right? With a low scale evaluation not good not so good but then they went through the viva it gets upgraded right uh, right so it's it's uh it's an important process and i have also seen situations right uh, where they went in with good reports right but during the viva during the oral defense uh they stumble and they you know commit all kinds of <laughs> Of of sins during the viva of uh, offenses during the viva, uh, and and uh, it, it it brought the whole viva session, the whole evaluation down, and I've seen cases where uh, the outcome is re submission. Uh, so in our context, we have the you know past one, uh, past with uh, we past with uh, minor corrections, and then past with major correction. Those are normal, right? Major, minor. Sometimes the the distinction is too fine and too minor. And sometimes the examiners or the committee wants you want to give time to the candidates to make the corrections, right? So uh, they give major correction, where, whereas it's maybe minor, right? But because of time, they give uh, they want they uh, they give you major. But resubmission is uh, you know uh, more than major. It means that. You, you you might need to do uh, data collection you might do rewriting there might be some chapters that cannot be used uh, you know uh, so resubmission meaning you go through the viva process again uh, you go through the viva process again that's what resubmission means of course the other one is fail right uh, we do not want that so uh, viva preparation viva is an important event so i say is when it comes to viva also only you uh, the examiner, the examiners, and God, right? And then <laughs> I or the supervisor won't be able to help you during the actual viva session, during examination session, right? So um, these are the twelve principles. Number one, uh, the principle of sensing. Uh, I often get uh, questions from students, postgraduate students. You know, uh, who who is the examiner? Uh, it's important, yeah. Who is the examiner, right? I even have, I have, a, I even have uh, students who say, please do not get women examiners, right? <laughs> uh, women of this type, because women of this type have this type of problem, or uh, men of this ethnic group, be careful, you know. Uh, so there's a lot of profiling uh, before the exam examination happened, and that is 
this is a, that is a big problem, right? That is a big problem. You go in, you try to profile, you try to psychoanalyze the examiners and try to outsmart the examiners based on their social profiling or some psychological stupidity that you have, psychological rubrics that you have. Throw away those things. What you do, you want to do principal sensing. What is it? You you respond according to the energy that's coming to you, to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, the type of questions, right? Uh, that comes towards towards you. So it's not about who's asking. It's not about whether it's female or male or whatever. You just sense the energy. So sometimes, uh, what is it? A, a big guy might be soft on certain days or might be soft in certain subjects or might be sensitive on certain other issues. So it depends on the moment. So it's very moment dependent uh, 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 response that you need to have. right? So you need to sense. It's like in, in Wing Chun, we learn the Yong Chun Chun and you learn about sensing what the energy is coming. If the energy is strong, we respond according to the strength of the energy. So counter argue or not to counter argue. Uh, it depends. Uh, if the question is about you know asking you about the facts, you answer with the facts. Uh, sometimes they ask you just to know whether you know your stuff or not to explain uh, to the examiners. So it is important that uh, you do not argue. You do not you know fight back. Where there is no need to fight. Uh, so. Uh, it's not about responding to according to the person, but responding according to the energy that's coming towards you, to the, the, the question. You got that sense, what's the meaning of the question? If you're not sure, you ask the examiner, do you mean this? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I understand that. Do you mean this? Uh, you know? uh, so your response as a, as a candidate during the examination is also impo equally important. General rule of thumb, you go in, with humility, right? you go in humble. Remember, the examiners, uh, uh, they are the they, they will judge your <laughs> your 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 communication. You judge your thesis. You judge your response. They will also be the jury. They are, uh, they will be the one that will be giving you the sentence. So, you know, pass pass with this thing. Uh, pass pass with minor correction. Pass with major correction. Read submission. So you want to be humble. You know, use use the word sir. Ma'am, professor, right? Uh, if you're not sure, just use the word professor, right? And you say, oh, no, I'm not professor. And then you say, okay, you know, something. Uh, uh, so uh, at the very least, you use the word sir, ma'am, right? Uh, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, right? Uh, so it's, it's general general rule of thumb is about go in with the, your response is a, is, is a, uh, 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 is a humble response. Now, uh, I have... I have uh, uh, situations, I've encountered situations where my own students, right? Uh, this is, what, this is my, my first student, by the way, a long, long time ago. He's already a, a lecturer and got his doctorate and all that. So he was in a, 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 a committee. Oh, the examiners were like a firing squad, right? They just bombarded him. Boom, 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 boom. Right? And, and there were times that he were on the right side and the examiners were in the wrong because I, I read his stuff and no and he just let the examiners bombard him right uh, and 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 at the end he will say okay uh, I will I will make the corrections yes that's a good point I will take that into consideration I'll make the correction okay that is my weakness I will make those changes right the outcome was positive because the energy his response matches the energy of the examiners because the examiner is good. I'm so glad that you have a student who's very open-minded, willing to accept suggestions that we give you, right? I usually, when we give them suggestions about changing the title, changing this, making it, they will argue and argue and argue. But his response was, was the correct match with the examiner's line of questioning, with the examiner's questioning. Now, I have another student, right? Um, she has graduated as well. And then she was so argumentative, right? uh, sometimes combative as well, right? So at the examiner says, you say this, she, she will make a point. And then the examiner, uh, the chair gave her, her, I said she gave her, I think 10 minutes or five, 10 minutes to make her presentation, but she pushed on to 15, 20 minutes, right? 
was like, oh, okay, okay. But she stayed strong, right? And she was fighting back, right? Very, very, uh, fighting back in the sense that, um, in a logical way, fighting back, not in the sense of, 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 of and being antagonistic, but making her case, right? Clearly, cogently, persuasively, right? Uh, so, at the end, the examiners were very happy as well. Because the examiners said, well, she knows her stuff, right? She knows her stuff. She makes good argument. She's logical. She uses her facts very well. Uh, she knows her methodology. So uh, I have experienced different responses uh, from the students, different responses from the examiners. So, but what happened was, in those two cases, those are two different responses, right? But the responses match the examiner's uh, 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 energy that's coming to us. Uh, the candidate, right? So you you got, you got to sense. You must sense. It's a moment kind of thing that you got to be the completely present and look in the eyes of the examiners. Is this what you mean? Let me understand. You know, if you're not you're not sure, you ask the examiner to restate the question, right? You even can say, "Is this what you mean?" You restate the question of the examiner, or you ask the examiners to restate the question, right? Until you get. Not just the question, but the meaning behind the question, right? There are cases, right, where the examiner, so the point principle number one is actually a very important principle, where the examiner asks a question that is already in your thesis. Oh, I see. Uh, so why? Because the examiner wants to know whether you write your thesis or not. Uh, there are times that the, the thesis is, you know, very well written, but the examiners want to see whether... Uh, you wrote the thesis or not, right? Uh, and the, and thank God this not, didn't didn't happen to my students, right? But uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm grateful. Uh, thank God, all my students graduate and they they, they pass, right? They're now more than twenty now. They all hundred percent passing. I'm grateful. But I have one case, one student, right? Where at that time I was a representative of the director or the dean, right? <coughs> So I'm, I don't participate in the examination process. I was there just as a representative of the, of the school, of the center. But the, the examiner was, was doing uh, online. Uh, this is way before COVID, right? Uh, the examiner asked a specific question about the, 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 the thesis and the candidate was not able to answer. And yet she wrote those uh, uh, those things in her thesis, right? So the examiner has questioned, has doubts about her, her thesis. So that affected her evaluation later on. So, uh, so it's uh, the, 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 so some questions is not about um, uh, questioning you. It's, it's about finding out whether, whether you know your stuff or not. Uh, now, Still under principle one, I have the change or not to change, right? This is actually an important point. To change your work or not to change your work, right? To make certain certain revision or not to make certain revision. If the suggestion is made by the examiner, have you looked at this literature, this reference, right? And you have not. You say, no, I have not. I will look into it. I will incorporate that. So change or not to change it depends on the type of changes you need to make. If it's a small minor change, let the examiner suggest to you it just accept. If the change is about one paragraph, go ahead, accept, accept it. Say so a good point, I will accept it, I will make the correction. If the change requires to do one or two pages of work, go ahead. It doesn't matter, right? That's easy to do. Right? One, you have written two or hundred over pages of work. Uh, correcting one page, two pages, one paragraph, two paragraphs, there is no problem with that. You just accept the, 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 the changes uh, that they're being suggested to you. So there are certain things that you do not need to counter. You do not need to argue back, right? So, and, and I remember, at least a long, long time ago, when I was in my PhD, right? My supervisor, would I, I remember I went to see him, and whenever my supervision, I would do, I'll bring a list of improvement points, points of improvement. So he said, he told me, Reef, when it comes to Viva, you got to let the examiners make corrections. That's there, there to make corrections as well. So allow them the space to make corrections. Right? So uh, they want to show that they're responsible. They want to show that they are um, 
they are they are they have read your work so uh, uh you know that is that is something that you want to demonstrate uh that that you are listening to them that you are you demonstrate the humility to accept those those changes the corrections so that's principle number one the principle of sensing uh, number two the principle of mighty coconut tree right uh, this I have actually explained in point number one what is the mighty coconut tree uh, it's about correcting or not correcting so it's like what, what i told you about my why my first student last time so he just let the wind blow right it's a big uh, typhoon uh, that blows through him right he just let you blow me and blow me i said okay and it was my mistake my my weakness right so a lot of things during examiner uh, examination during the viva is for you to accept and take the blow right uh, and be the mighty oak or the mighty coconut tree i'm using coconut tree because we will be able to relate much better right uh, you know not the strong tree you're trying to resist we resist you get blown by the by the by the by the wind by the strong wind right the the wind is so strong it will you will <laughs> you want to be able to swing and swing and swing and swing right? let them let it hit you you just take the the, the blow right uh, you know so do not get discouraged do not get um over discouraged right that is i know the the the, the criticisms can pull you down uh, very easily during examination where you have anxiety you have stress you have uh, all this <coughs> challenges emotional uh, uh what is it yeah, emotional uh, uh 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 constraints right uh, that you cannot fight back you know? so but at that time you just take all the corrections right so let the wind blow if it's or there's no little impact but the, when the impact is big right that's where you got to be able to stand your ground so connecting back to the sensing part right uh when do you challenge right you challenge when you need to go back to make uh, to to uh to carry out data collection that is when you do not want uh, uh to allow a suggestion to uh, for from the examiners uh to tell you to go back and collect new data right that's where you want to argue uh now you can argue a number of things right you can say well all right i have five objectives or four objectives right so uh maybe the f- i cannot meet my fifth objective but my four objectives or my four research questions are still valid are still phd worthy so uh i can you know, drop that research questions or research objective right and i still have you know so much to say and can still make the contribution i want to make right uh so this is this is the part that you, you know, it's okay you got the thing about right so but uh if 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 certain part of your research is over promising right and the examiner say you you know you promised to do this you said you're going to do this but you did not do this right uh, so this is where the 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 argument can occur so you need to know when uh, you should give in and the other one is uh if uh, you have collected the data right another way you could do it is to say well what if uh i reconstruct the research and say uh you know i can say i expand my research question uh, that can uh be answered by the data i have uh, so that's another way to shape but this requires some thinking requires some uh, ability for you to understand the data to understand the suggestions that are being made to able to alter to adapt your data <coughs> to the attack that's coming right but you do not want to go back and do data collection as much as possible but if they is you're forced to do it then you're forced to do it there's no no, no. they have absolute power right the, the the examiners have absolute power they are like united states like they're the five veto powers right they have veto power completely like they talk about uh, the the country you know united nation being democratic and all that no it's not democratic there's five veto powers there it's not democratic they have absolute power there right they can restrain or they can you know, vote for you or vote for you out you know whatever so they have veto power absolute right uh that's why i said there are only three parties there the examiners you 
and God, right? And hopefully, you have all the blessings from God. God will help you. So that is principle number two. Uh, so principle two is actually re-emphasizing principle number two or number one, right? Okay. Number three, <coughs> principle of clarity. Uh, under principle of clarity, uh, excuse me, mm, uh, a, a number of things that I want to highlight. Um, principle of clarity is about for you to be composed, to for you to be uh, confident, right? Uh, uh, Muzaki, are you listening? Right? Uh, so, uh, we do not want to be in a state of panic. Mm. We do not want to be in a state of stress, uh, 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 distress rather, uh, that you not you are not able to answer the questions that are being asked because you forgot you get stressed, right? So what I'm asking you to do, right? I'm asking all the postgraduate students to do during the buffer is to use the listing principle uh, to get that to get that clarity. Uh, there are three things about my research problem. One, two, three. You need to be able to know to memorize. Those three things. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Right. If you have ten, it's a bit hard to memorize, right? But you need to be able to one, two, three, right? Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, w w what's the significance of your research? One, two, three, or four, or five. You go more. Seven is max because there's a study about in you know, the number seven there. Yeah, you know, the memory, unless you're super memory, you can go nine. Because my contribution eight. So yeah. I just, actually, it's contribution, but I just mentioned the most important contribution. Yes. Three. Yeah, three. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> mm. But, but, uh, uh, it is about, this is about uh, a clarity. Uh, it's not just about Im impressing, but it's about clarity. An attack comes to you, question comes to you, right? You need to be able to capture the essence of the argument, the essence of the question, right? Still connecting to the the, to the sensing, right? So uh, by understanding the essence of uh, this is about clarity, right? Let me be clear, uh, professor. Let me be clear, sir. Right? Uh, is the essence of what you're saying this, right? So it's it's about principle of clarity. Always be clear. Right, uh, so you, you need to be clear about the question coming in. You need to be clear about what you want to you want to say. Right, so uh, you do not want to say, "I think uh, uh, you know, it's like that is not good." Right? Anything that begins with "I think" tend to be not good. Right, but you say there are three things, uh, four things, uh, and that becomes clear. Right, so uh, I state that you can briefly and clearly and convincingly explain your thesis. Yeah. So tell me about your thesis. And there's one of the simple lines that can start. Start. Tell me about your thesis. General question. Yeah, the general question. Right. Oh, ah, okay. ah, ah. So you go to the three things, the five things. Right? My thesis is about the title of my thesis is about right. Mm, you know, two, three, right? Uh, so you got to know uh something difficult to answer. The general oh. question. The general question. We have for example, we have the something that we need to deliver to them, but and the general question, it's fine. Okay. Mm. So we can we can replay, uh, replay the the question to the the examiner. So I'm just I just I told you you need to list down. What well, are you, your uh, tell me about thesis or the five things you need to know about my thesis. The one one the research questions. Yeah. The, uh, my, my research is about this is a question. I'm asking this question, right? The second thing you need to know my, my thesis. Uh, second thing that if someone to ask me a question, uh, these are the five things about my thesis. Oh, right. or you can say, and then I, I can I can tone it down so that it sounds so humble. Uh. Thank God you asked me that question, you know. My father asked me that question, my cousins me asked me that question, and again, you can make it well, you know, it's turned into something and, and you can have that, you know, that good gu, gu, there. You can make it some kind of like, joke. My 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 imam I go back to my kampung, they ask me that same question, what your thesis is about, right? So I've come up with it's five things. Ah right. One, you know, uh number one, R for 
revolution. So research question. Ah, that, uh, eh, P for uh, peanuts. Ah, problem statement. Ah, nah. Oh, they will laugh at Ah, that's good. You have transformed the energy of the examination into something lively, cordial. Oh, this guy is fun. Ah, to be I like I like talking to him. So so it, it's you, you use that. It's about communication now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so. What's your thesis? And this is one of the common questions they ask. Tell me about your study. What's your study about? Or another another thing they ask you. What's so special about your study? Right? I should be able to tell. Oh, special is another word for significance, right? Oh, I right. See. So, uh, but you can talk about different things. But yeah, yeah. but you can <laughs> you can you get them. You can make some jokes. Right? Oh, the special thing about my my study is that every time I want to study, I have to have my uh, tetare. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Next to it is my roti canai. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I don't mean that. I mean something. Else. You transform this whole thing into something. So you need to have clarity about what your thesis is. I noted it down. Your problem statement, your methodology. Uh, so methodology is almost a must, right? I haven't gone through any uh, viva session without them mentioning what asking about methodology. So tell me about your methodology, huh? Uh, my methodology. I uh, really do not want to do that. So my methodology is about reproductive research strategy, and the essence of reproductive research methodology is that it asks, it requires, it puts the burden of proof on the social scientists to uncover the generative mechanism behind a particular phenomena. Right? Or is it okay? Or you can say. Research, the productive research uh, strategy. You know, according to this, according to that, according to that. So it comes, you come in as something that as someone who understands the field. But remember, your tone is a humble tone. Right? Uh, maybe my tone just now was a bit. There's a touch of arrogance in that tone, right? Maybe, right? So you tone it down, right? You go with a humble tone, right? Uh, so, so uh, key findings. There's another one. Your contribution. There's another one. So, so now uh, you got to go back and make the the list. What's my thesis? What's the three things, five things, four things about my thesis? Problem statement: the three things, five things, five. You know, be clear about that. You can also write it on a card, right? <laughs> yeah. Especially now, now the uh, now it's online. You can use the card, right? There's nothing wrong using the card. Prepare using the card or piece of paper. What you do not want to do is this. Oh yeah, my my research contribution. Oh yeah, bad, 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 bad. You do not want to clipping, clipping. Ah, oh, that's bad. Right. Uh, uh, I have I have a student of mine which is who is probably the fastest one who did his PhD with me. He can he's a type who runs faster than that. The supervisor. Oh, my key contribution. We look at you look at uh. He asked me and then he, uh, the examiner asked him. He said if you look at the uh, page one thirty seven paragraph number two. <laughs> my research contributions are well, one, two. Three. He even does, he doesn't even look at that 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 page, but he can refer to that page. And then the one who's doing this are the examiners. The examiners are flipping. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's another way to do it, right? So you show you have clarity, right? You can you can do that. Now I'm not asking you to memorize, right? But I'm asking you to have that clarity, uh, and actually the clarity helps you. To be able to answer the question uh, and helps the uh, you to understand what the, the 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 question that's posing towards towards you as well coming towards you so so that's the three thing uh, principle number three principle number four is principle of contribution to knowledge and I've seen uh, people become panic not knowing what their contribution uh, to knowledge is uh, I think you have that clarity you have the eight points there. That's good, right? So I just want to highlight this as a separate point uh, that it must be uh, uh, really in your mind, right? Because uh, ultimately, when you are able to answer your research questions, right, you are actually making contribution. This is actually the meaning uh, of your research, your contribution to knowledge. I've contributed to what? How? How have you? Advance the knowledge of, uh, in your case, uh, Islamic NGO, of 
uh, Islamic NGOs, uh, uh, literature on higher education, right? So you, you be, be clear about your contribution of knowledge. Now, um, you did refer to literature review just now. So one way to talk about literature, literature, literature review is to come, there are four groups of uh, literature review that I contributed to, uh, or four group of corpus of knowledge. Right? So uh, just now you did not use the word corpus or group, so literature review, you put them into group because you have four just now, right? So you can say that, right? Uh, there are four areas that I make a contribution in, right? Uh, so you can say that, right? So be clear about that as well. Be clear about that. Uh, so uh, number five, uh, reaffirming, uh, reaffirming, a principle of reaffirming. Uh, what does this mean? It means that in the process of viva, there are many moments that uh, candidates can get drowned by the questions or the questioning. And sometimes the examiner asks you not just one question in one breath, he asks like seven questions. But how about, how about this? How about that? And yet this chapter you didn't say that. And you, you, know, <laughs> you get you get panic, you get anxious, you know, not know not knowing with with where and what to answer. So what you do? Uh, so this is about reaffirming. What do you affirm? You affirm your thesis statement, you reaffirm your research question. Remember, all research is about answering research questions. So what you do is that you affirm your thesis statement again. So my research is about this, 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 right? And my research questions is about this, 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 this right? So, uh, and all, everything there is connected to research questions. Remember, that's why in my supervision, I always talk about the compass. The compass is your research question, right? So you can draw back all the uh, attacks back to your research question. You have the direction. You have that sense of direction again. You do not get drowned. So you can say, I have these three research questions, and this is connected to the methodology part to answering this research question. This is connected to the contribution of, of my research. Uh, you know, uh, so the, the, this, the thesis statement, uh, the thesis statement, which is the thesis, right, is basically uh, the, the answer to the research question. Right? Uh, and um, you will need to be able to, in your case, because you have so many generative mechanisms in there, right? It's not just one or two or three. So you need to be able to capture the thesis statement in much more concise way. Uh, uh, so it's not easy to capture your thesis statement. You know, it, 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 it's hard to stay in one sentence and one statement, right? Uh, but, but that's what thesis is. Thesis is about making an argument. Right? You know, when you write, a, uh, uh, we, we learn critical writing or technical writing, there's a thesis statement and then you have topic sentence and then you get content, right? Uh, so you, you, maybe your thesis statement is the, the essence of all the different generative mechanisms there, right? Uh, so you can talk about your thesis statement being the cultural and structural generative mechanisms, right? You can talk. So, but you, you know what they are. So this is a way of your centering yourself, centering the argument and be able to manage uh, the different kinds of attacks or questions that are coming towards you during the Bible. Right? So, so recentering to your thesis statement, to your research questions. Research question will be one to get straight back to the center, right? Uh, number six, principle of aligning and redirecting. Um, this is about, it's about yin and yang, tai chi kind of thing. <laughs> uh, certain words I would I encourage you, in fact, I will implore you, I will really uh, ask you to not use. And that's the word, but. Uh, why? I say, that's a very good question, but. <laughs> you deny, you negate the first part of what you say. Right? You want to replace with the word and. Right? Uh, so, uh, uh, so su suppose they say, uh, what you wrote there is silly. Or what you wrote there it's not complete. I mean, there's something, it's that kind of criticism that comes in. Uh, 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 it is incomplete. And uh, instead of using the but, it gives you a different energy. It gives the whole situation. It is an, it's a, uh, 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 fighting back. Uh, you are using his energy against him. Mm. 
so the, the force goes back to him right it's most like judo akido kind of thing right yeah so you're using his energy align and redirect back the energy so and that's a very important point you know what i agree with that point so much you know and then uh, you see uh, that's why i'm doing this right uh, if there are moments that you cannot defend your 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 the attack that comes in see uh, this is where i thought this research becomes problematic uh, and i discussed this matter with my supervisor mm, and the line that i'm taking is this so you you, you don't you don't negate you don't deflect you don't what is it you don't uh you know uh, uh belittle the points you're actually emphasizing the points you say yeah come 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 yeah, let me use your energy let me use your energy let me use it and then you throw it back right see <laughs> you, you know come 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 on this is Oh, we're going to go like that. <laughs> so, hello, examiners. Uh, don't listen to this. <laughs> so, so uh, uh, this and and uh, you you can use other methods. Of course, the 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 jokes. I think you can do that, right? Uh, to to uh, diffuse the energy right, that's coming in towards you. So this is about align and redirect, right? Uh, uh, so it's not about when you need to. You need to make a counter argument. You do not need to, you know, fight back with your own energy. You can use that energy to fight back. And oftentimes, when an attack comes in, you just realign yeah, the attack, right, to to the point that you want to make. Yeah. So use the energy, pick up your point, and send back the points to them. You, you get what I'm saying, right? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So the word "bad," the word uh, 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 "having said that many times," when I. I mean, uh, when I uh, advise this to to my students, uh, they still use the word "bad" from time to time because it's part of our language, right? Which is "bad," because we want to defend ourselves, right? Uh, so uh, that's where I think the right state of mind is important: is to be humble, uh, to be always aware. It's almost like uh, a Zen thing. It's like a, you know meditative thing, right? It's like uh, they they're coming and they say, "Okay, yeah, I'm like I'm a, I'm." A, I'm a master of the energy right now. You just feel the energy coming in. You're like, right, you're like, I'm not fighting back, right? So you can say like very calm and collected. Many zikir going on there, right? So uh, okay, that's aligning and redirecting. That's principle number six. Principle number seven, and it is crucial principle, which is principle of material preparation. So you want to make a list of what you want to bring and check before you leave. Come up with a checklist. Your thesis, right? Your most current thesis. Not some. I, mean, I have I have students who bring their own thesis to the to the examination. I mean, I think you you know what happens. Right? The, the, they look at he look at certain pages and then the examiners will go. This is not the same the same page, right? To so make sure the same page, the same thesis. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the 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 uh, what what are we talking about? Uh, material uh, in 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 the thesis itself. Put a bookmark or a tag of where the chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, uh, the various chapters are. And that put a tag. Uh, so it's about preparing the uh, the, the material. In this case, when we talk about technology now, so in your case, uh, Zakir, I think it's good to have two systems at least. Yeah, two system at work. So with that we need to figure out how later on. Right? Uh, you need to have one laptop, two laptops, or one laptop, one PC. Uh, and and if one fails, you have the other one, right? Uh, print out, yeah. So uh, print out uh, your um, slides. Print out your slides. So you have your slides with you all the time, right? Um, so usually, what happens is during viva session, uh, I will ask the candidates, my students, to print out the slides. And if they are not allowed allowed to present, they are allowed to. Uh, not present a slide. You'd like to just make verbal presentation. They can still dish out the handouts and still make a presentation, right? <laughs> you can still do that, right? Uh, so yeah, this is another another way to do it. So have the printouts, have the uh, uh, all those things that you need to get ready, get ready as well. Um, uh, I, I noted down here as well as uh, make make a checklist. In, in the don't use a your brain you just make a checklist one two three four five uh, get it get it ready a night before you know put it aside and then when you the next day you bring it 
with you. And you go through the checklist, done, 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 you bring with you, right? Uh, so it could be uh, you know, an, an exercise book or something to make note, a pen, all that, right? Uh, those are the checklists of the material you need to prepare, right? Uh, your if you're coming to office, make sure you bring your student card. You know? So you don't want you won't be able to access the, uh, the the office, right? So there's there's another one. Uh, so all those things, right? Uh, that your keys, your whatever, right? Uh, you know, then you want to get them ready a day before that, right? Okay, and then a principal presentation there, all right? I've touched uh, on uh, many points about the principal presentations, you know. PowerPoint presentation, keep it short and put in the extras at the back with some questions or some answers to expected, uh, answers uh, to, uh, to the expected and unexpected questions. They might also be unexpected questions. Uh, uh, so, handouts, preparation, get it ready. Like I said, and verbal presentation. So, the four different possible scenarios. One scenario vis-a-vis uh, -vis the presentation is that they say, okay, go ahead, make a presentation, right? Uh, so you can make a presentation. So one scenario is oftentimes the 15 minute presentation. 15 minutes, that's the usual time they give. Another scenario is 10 minute presentation, right? Another scenario, which is a third scenario, is no slide presentation, it's just oral presentation, verbal. So you need to be able to, to do that as well, right? But since you are doing online presentation, you can always have your notes next to you, right? Uh, so you need to be able to do it. That, that's the third kind. The fourth scenario is there is no presentation at all. They go straight to the question and answer, which can also happen, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> no presentation. Uh, that is another possible possibility, right? Uh, that has happened before as well, right? Uh, uh, Seldom, but it has happened before. So be ready for all the four scenarios, right? Uh, so 15 minute, the 10 minute, and the verbal presentation, okay? Uh, the next uh, principle of mastery projection, okay? Uh, uh, Raji, can you bring it up a bit? Uh, principle number nine. Hmm. Okay, principle of mastery projection, of mastery of keys. So knowing where the key pages are. So it helps, like, like I noted just now, that you might want to know where the, you know, key, uh, suppose the examiner says, tell me where your key findings are, tell me where your, you know, you, you're able to know where the pages are, you can, or you can detect where the pages are almost uh, instantaneously, right? Uh, so you tag it, yeah, you tag that. Uh, the key literature are the key findings. Uh, so they ask you, who are the big names in this? In this field, uh, you need to be able to say these are the big names, uh, the, the key literature that you, li you refer to, right? Uh, see, these are not obvious, but uh, you need to know, right? Uh, so it's, a, uh, it's, about, it's about mastery of your own work, right? Uh, physically bookmark your key pages. So uh, you, you, need to, you need to do that. You need to project that you have mastered your your work, your master, the the area you're 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 in, right? So if you're in higher education, you got to show you really master it, right? If you're in uh, you if study Muhammadiyah organization, you, you master it as well. Uh, if you're studying uh, Islamic NGO, you master it as well, right? So uh, that is that is the mastery you want to be able to project or defend, uh, right? So number ten, principle of self projection. Uh, you, you might not have the problem with this, right? Uh, but uh, and there, there are moments I remember, uh, I should talk about this generally, but uh, you know, the, you know, when you people walk to the, you know, the Viva session, right? You might perspiring and sweating and all that. And so the, you know, they might, you know, have uh, exude certain body, body odor, right? So you do not want to make that a point of uh, something that annoys the examiner. So, so make sure you have the right fragrance or whatever. You have new clothing or you have another set of uh, clothes. Uh, you know, uh, uh, if you are working to the place you are doing your viva. In this case, if you are doing in your room or in your office, uh, you won't have that problem. But what would be the right attire, right? 
you do not want to wear t-shirts. Uh, t-shirt is wrong, right? Uh, do not want to wear t-shirts. I think what you have right now is fine. Um, normally in our university, we do not have to put in suit and tie. But I do have one of my candidates last time. He is like a communication guy. You know, he puts on a suit and a tie, right? He was the only one who does that. The examiners do not do that. But it gives him a sense of self-confidence. He's a communication guy, right? And he did very well during the the the, the Viva session. In fact, he upgraded himself. Uh, his, his grades went up during the Viva. So sometimes it's also about putting on the, the clothing that gives you the confidence. Sometimes, you know, if you put on certain clothes, you feel much more confident. Uh, that helps, right? But no funny clothes, of course, you know, that... <laughs> No singlets, no no t-shirts, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> so very decent, right? Uh, you can donate to dress up, you can dress down, but decent. Um, uh, and, and then in this case, uh, since we are doing online uh, uh, examination, online viva, so make sure behind you is not something that is. Uh, uh, messy, too messy, right? <laughs> no bad feelings. <laughs> you know, you got to make it uh, opaque, right? Not, not, not easy to see, right? So maybe you want to come to office, right? So that's sometimes I, I don't get annoyed by all these things, right? I, I'm, I'm okay by displaying whatever behind me or looking at other people's uh, background. I find that very exciting, very sociological as well. <laughs> sometimes, right? But some examiners might might be picky. Yeah. So I, I think if you do it in the office, it'd be fine. Right? Uh, so uh, that's point number 10. Number 11, uh, principle of trap avoiding. Uh, this is during the Viva, sometimes examiners like to give you trap question, trick uh, question, you know, the uh, example. Uh, if you're given a chance, what how would you redo your your PhD, how would you redo your research? And then you say, well, one, number two, number three, number four, number five. And I say, okay, good. Now take back your research and redo your research based on what you have suggested, right? <laughs> you do not want to answer that question. But uh, I, I remember one of my, uh, my, my students who completed her, her uh, 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 Viva, uh, the examiner asked, uh, you know, would you want to do your uh, if you were redo, re 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 uh, if you were to redo your masters or PhD, eh, uh, how would you do it differently? Uh, simple question. How would you do it differently? And her answer was simple. Oh, please! I do not want to do my thesis anymore. This is the final one. <laughs> so now the examiners were laughing after that. Right? Please, please, I do not want to do it. <laughs> I surrender. I do not want to do this anymore. <laughs> so then you know, again, you get transformed. The the question is called. Uh, the, Conflict transformation, the, uh, the energy transformation. Uh, in, uh, the first and last. <laughs> so, in other words, so don't get trapped, right? So, if somebody were to ask you that question, how would you answer? How would you redo it? What your what is the weakness? And how you improve your weakness? Usually, that comes from an examiner who has not read fully your your, your thesis. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, I know certain examiners. Uh, okay, <laughs> this is a good question that keeps on coming from the same examiner. So what you do? Okay, uh, you can say, well, what I see is there are certain areas that can be improved, right? Uh, however, those areas fall into outside of my research questions. Uh, so you take your future research put to answer that research question. Uh, there, there are research, future research, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, yes,
So, so, okay, okay. I, add the literature. Go ahead. You just take the literature. You can eat. Uh, I forget about the, uh, the previous literature. Yes, yes. Current literature. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or you can put the three things again. <laughs> the three things that I think I want to improve. Number one is the literature, you know, and this part of literature I haven't covered yet. Number two, I forgot to thank my great grandfather in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know uh, exa uh, <laughs> my examination uh, I've seen uh, examination uh, thesis right yeah, he, he came from a, a village uh, not in Malaysia and in Africa he thanked everyone in the village you know it's a long it's a list of person no, all in the, uh, acknowledgement all everyone in the village oh, I said wow wow, wow it's amazing <laughs> I said he said uh, told me this so there's another you know this unexpected question right yeah, you can quote another th the third thing uh you, you can put in something that would, they would disagree as well i think there should be a uh a quote from this imam yeah, yeah. <laughs> the salafi imam <laughs> oh please please don't put, don't put this in you know yeah, uh, so you, you know you these are unexpected things and sometimes examiners are tricky as well so it's, this is where it's about battle of wits a bit you know uh, but I'm, I'm telling you ahead of time so it's like buah buah yang akan datang it's like uh, you know this this thing you block this way this thing you block that way you know so this is the the thing uh, so uh, track questions and be careful of that that's where I say clarity is important sensing is important you got to know what be clear about what question they're asking yeah so number 12 principle of anticipation of points of challenge so you look back at your thesis right now right like Mazaki, you look back at thesis see where you see the weak points are yeah they have written your thesis now you cannot improve it right but you can identify where the weak points are and you see uh maybe the points are here so you start anticipating your weak points right and and it's like uh getting uh, uh when a friendly match to know where your, is it your defense? Is your offense? Where is it that's lacking, right? Uh, um, my own take is that, uh, how is it? My own take is that you have a very really strong thesis right now, right? Uh, you have a lot of, your, your data is strong. Uh, you have carried out a very thorough analysis, right? So I do not see that as a problem with that. <coughs> I do see one point of challenge, which is a challenge of methodological understanding on the part of the examiners yeah. examiners might not understand retroductive research strategy they might not even heard of retroductive research strategy right uh, 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 so well, you for simple, I, last time I when I present in the retroductive research strategy session mm -hmm. actually I describe the differences among all different research strategies so uh, I, I prepare to good very good to show that there is a uh, four different research it, strategies yes yes uh, yeah. yes and in exactly this this uh, this uh, this uh, people if i show in my powerpoint or just when they when ask, they ask after the thank you after the thing. yes okay. after the thank you so uh. when i show so maybe they they will more yeah, familiar. If if the the if the examiner is not familiar with the reset. Yes. 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 He showed it at the end. Uh, if they ask, and then you can show that one. However, there's one thing about retroductive research strategy, and it is the boldness of retroductive research strategy. But the scientific realism is a very bold uh, <coughs> research uh, paradigm, right? It has this proposition that it, it claims to put forth a causal explanation so causal explanation is not easy to establish so you, you you want to look at your research you want to look at the points where uh, that causal relations are not well established there might be there might be certain points that it's not strong right it might be there but moderately strong so you, you, you see you know you, you cannot establish a causal relation now 
one way to defend uh, uh, a retroductive research strategy is to use the substantive uh, contributing uh, causal factor. It's not the complete causal factor, factor, but a substantive contributing causal factor. So you mean it's like uh, I, I require a hammer, I require strength, I require a head to hit somebody to make it bloody, right? But you have this, the evidence is the hammer has blood there, right? So, <laughs> but you haven't found the, the hand yet, right? So this is a, a evidence that shows a, you know, a substantive contributing factor to the event, right? Uh, so you can talk about that. Uh, so that's one way to defend it. Uh. It was super clean, huh. yes, because uh, the analysis of claim mm -hmm. that the hypothetical model mm. scientific realism, not scientific, critical. Scientific realism. Mm. When they, 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 they do the research, not the claim that the, the, the knowledge construction is 100%. Yeah. 100% <laughs> is uh, describe the reality. Yeah. Because there is a possibility another explanation. Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Something yes, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, what is it to say that? How to... <laughs> Scientific realism is not a humble, humble philosophy, you know, it's not. Uh, critical rationalism is. Uh, it's very humble, you know, it's like we can know, cannot know the truth, we can only come to the truth, right? But scientific realism is not, a, it's a bold kind of thing. So it proposes a causal explanation, right? So you do not want to run away from its uh, that, that philosophical roots. So you can tone it down, uh, not to say that it's a complete, there are parts that are not complete, but still substantive contributing factor, right? Uh, so it still leads to the events. Uh, it still leads to the events, right? Uh, uh so without which the event cannot occur right uh you can not, not comprehensive not comprehensive, total uh, total. Not total right uh, but uh we can talk about social reality because social reality is not physical reality you know you won't be able to capture all factors but the the challenge here is to capture the substantive uh factor the subject, when described the subject is like uh, we are the puzzle. Yeah, so yeah. Maybe not so complete, but it, we we can see the the pattern of the, the reality. Yes, yes, pattern. Yeah. Uh, yes. Like, like what called the uh, the picture picture you seen what you got the sand for example. It's a bit different when you seen <laughs> the the picture you seen electronic stuff. Mm, yes, 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 yes. We, we, uh, what I, I did is uh, describe like the, the painter. Like. The painter, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so this it can lead to a, a philosophical uh, discussion, which is fine. And uh, finally, if you cannot defend, you just say this is the limits, a limitation of a uh, retroductive research strategy, right? Uh, so uh, that's it. It is the best uh, methodology to meet to answer your questions, right? So uh, there's, uh, there's, right? It's not there, okay? Uh, so, uh, it, 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 this is which is, if the, it gets to that point, you, you, which is a good point. It's not nothing wrong with your research methodology. It's still the right research. Method. That is the limitation. Of course, <laughs> <at> all methodology <laughs> yeah. has its weaknesses, <laughs> and retroductive research yeah. has its weaknesses because. It, it, cl it claims to create the causal model, right? Yeah. Not just causal two variables, the whole model is there, yeah, right? So uh, it's a big claim, right? It's a big claim because the level analysis is the organization, not the human, like the other, maybe the other, this is strategy. So yes, 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 yes. <laughs> mm. uh, so these are the 12 principles uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, preparing yourself, viva preparation, right? Uh, I might go a bit more down there. There's a, uh, some more points that I can talk about. Yeah, presentation slides, I did mention this to you just now. So prepare to give presentation without PowerPoint. With PowerPoint, 10 minutes. With PowerPoint, 15 minutes. 
So pre- bring your slides, prepare slides to 10, uh, 15 minutes presentation. So you have, uh, you are able to present your slide in 10 minutes, present a, a slide in 15 minutes, right? And put the extras after thank you, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, some extended Viva quest guidelines. Uh, we scroll down a bit more, Raji. Uh, so you need to know what's your PhD about. I talk about that. Yeah? What's your problem statement? Be clear about that. What are your main findings? Uh, I could have known that without doing PhD. So what's the point of your PhD? <laughs> that's another. That's another. It's not a tricky question. It's a nasty question. So what's the point about all this? Ah, there you go. <laughs> what's the point? Uh, you got to be able to say the point, which is your contribution, your theoretical contribution, right? Uh, yeah, theoretical contribution. Yeah, yeah. The theoretical contribution is that. So what is your contribution to knowledge? Yeah, right. The point is that contribute to knowledge, right? What, how does it contribute to knowledge? It contributes to literature and contribution to the Theory, literature, even methodology, even uh, the, when we talk about the point, it can be many things. It can be application, you know. Uh, number five, uh, methodology. How can you justify the methodology you have adopted? Uh, so. How do you use it to meet your research objectives? Uh, so that, that you need to be able to answer that. Is the data sufficient? Is there anything, any data missing? How do you answer the question of hidden narrative? Okay, this is more about adaptive research strategy versus uh, inductive research strategy, I suppose, yeah. The hidden narrative is very much an anthropological question, right? Uh, you know, I, I mentioned this before, that hidden narrative uh, uh, is about, you know, how do you know what people say is what they meant, right? Uh, how do you capture the meanings behind symbols and all that, right? And so, well, especially if you're in in in, uh, in the state of Java, I say Java and the, the Javanese culture, a lot of hidden narratives in there. You know? <laughs> You're going to be able to, be able to explain that. No? How do you capture the na- hidden narratives? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the the. If it's phenomenological, remember phenomenology. We don't talk about hidden narrative. We take the hidden narrative. We the the respondents, right? So, uh, but in, in your case, you you got to be able to answer if there's such a question, because once in a while this question uh, uh, being popped up by the uh, by by the examiner, uh, especially examiners who are into. Uh, anthropological research uh, or, or, or uh, uh, some grounded theory as well. Sometimes they do that as well. So number seven, how do you analyze your data? Is the analysis uh, logical? How do you extract at a, or arrive at your conclusions from your data? So sometimes the examiners want to see how from the raw data you process and become uh, to the model, you know, arrive at the, the analysis. Uh, so you would be you need to be able to explain how you process the data, right? Uh, number eight, uh, 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 can you discuss your findings or analysis? What are the key findings? Uh, this one I've stated before. Uh, go uh, Scroll down a bit more, Rajesh. Thank you. Uh, how would you do your PhD differently? Are you satisfied with your PhD? Uh, this is this or, or your, or the trick question. Have you read the latest uh, literature? Why did you read this? You know, these are... Uh, also, there is actually the success from the examiners also, right? Uh, uh, so, <laughs> have you read the latest literature? Oh, God. <laughs> 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 literature. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you should be able to read. No, what is the latest literature? So, anyway, this, is, this is the unexpected question type. You know? uh, this is a kind of nasty question. People can ask. This is the unexpected question type. You know? uh, this is a kind of nasty question that people can ask. Now, since you're doing PhD, right? Your PhD is about Muhammadiyah University, right? What's the latest literature on Muhammad University? Yeah, for instance, your, your research is about Islamic uh, NGOs, right? So what's the latest literature on Islamic NGOs? There might be some nasty question. It doesn't happen often, but it can happen. You know, these are the type of things that can happen. Uh, so why didn't you read it? Uh, you be able, so if you cannot, so you just say, I'm sorry, I haven't read it. You know? uh, but it'd be good to know what the literature, literature, literature is. And if you haven't included it, you say, my my PhD covered from this time to this time. You haven't included it, but if you like me to cover, I'd be happy to bring it in. You know, this is just one page, two pages, uh, no problem. Uh, okay. Uh, important to know: Did you do your own work? So you want to demonstrate that you have done this work, uh, either 
through the mastery of the knowledge of your PhD, or sometimes by the uh, small stories in the field. So it's possible when uh, when 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 we're there. So me wonder how did you do it? Field, so that I already did actually in the three or the location, but mm. because the data is already in London, and then we we decide only just two yes. locations. Yes, yeah. You can you can explain that. Yeah, yeah no problem with that. Yeah, um, I would keep that to the last if you need to explain. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then because that would be how would you do your PhD differently? There you go. Oh, okay, do the other one. You know, because research. But you already have your answer, so I would not be uh, too afraid of that. Yeah. Uh, so remember, I highlighted this last part. All research is about answering research questions. So the field, you mean field of the your 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 field, which is field. Uh, which you have for the four literature, oh. four corpus of knowledge, there, right? Uh, so, uh, is is your work PhD worthy? Uh, so you know, uh, so uh, is it definitely PhD worthy is because there's no research uh, at theoretical literature on this yet. You know, uh, it's not just empirical but theoretical. Right? Is it publishable? You have published parts of your research, right? So, so here we go. There, so all research about is about answering research questions, right? Hold on, hold on, uh, Raji. Don't stop the recording yet. <laughs> okay, you have any thoughts? Yeah? I should, uh, I must to revise my PowerPoint, like yes, you yes. suggest mm -hmm. to me, yeah. and then prepare to, yeah, my, maybe I will, I will do exercise for myself, mm -hmm. and uh, the first I want to revise, and then I send to you the, revise the PPT PowerPoint, yeah. and then of course I want to prepare first. Yes, yes. The, the, the revised PowerPoint, make it up to seven slides. That's good. Seven slides. Yeah. But you, you mentioned it the way that 10 and 15. Minutes. <laughs> no, no slides. No minutes. Slides. minutes. Yeah. 10 and 15, that's too long, Musa okay, okay, okay. Seven slides. Seven slides is enough, right? Uh, <laughs> Presentation, yeah, seven okay. slides. Keep it to seven slides. Uh, uh, I'm concerned if you have too many. Uh, if you want to cut, you cut the beginning part, not the. Yeah, uh, go straight from you know, go to the the findings. I think we can stop the the recording. Right, thank, thank you. you. All right, thank you, thank you. Alhamdulillah.